Intel Core Ultra 200S or Arrow Lake has arrived. And that means I can add to my small collection of Intel memorabilia. This is Lunar Lake or Core Ultra 200V, which we recently covered. And you will see that the new Core Ultra 200S is quite different to the desktop processors 13th and 14th gens with which we are familiar. Today's the news embargo. The processors go on sale in two weeks time on October the 24th. And Intel promises an elite gaming experience with a gigantic leap in performance per watt. In this chart, they're comparing the new Core Ultra 9 to 285K against the existing Core i9 14900K. And the upshot is that system power drops significantly by about 80 watts and frame rates drop by 3 FPS. Hang on a moment. Reviewers were upset with AMD when Zen 5 only showed around 5% uplift from Zen 4 to Zen 5. Are we actually saying that Intel has gone backwards with their latest processors? As mentioned, the new processors go on sale on October the 24th, and that is also when we will be doing our reviews. Initially, there are five SKUs going on sale. Top of the stack is the Core Ultra 9 285K with 24 cores. Below that, the Core Ultra 7 265K and KF. As you'd expect, the F means there's no integrated graphics. The Ultra 7 265 has 20 cores. And bottom of the stack for the time being, the Core Ultra 5 245K and KF with 14 cores. And you will note that the core count and the thread count aligns because Intel is ditching hyperthreading or SMT. We have pricing for the new processors. The Core Ultra 9 is $589, which is about what we'd expect. Core Ultra 7 just under $400 and Core Ultra 5 just about $300. And we can see on this chart of feeds and speeds how the P&E cores behave with their base speeds and their maximum turbo speeds. And we can also see the integrated graphics, how many XE cores they have and the clock speeds they run at. We also see a reference to the NPU, the AI part of the equation. And we see support for DDR5 6400 out of the box, although Intel is keen for us to run with faster DDR5 and see how it performs. Also note the maximum turbo power, 250 watts for the Core Ultra 9 and 7, 159 watts for the Core Ultra 5. The next slide shows the L3 cache hierarchy for the SkyMont E cores, but it also shows us the layout of the processor. Interestingly, the P cores and the E cores are not blocked together. Instead, the P cores are broken up with the E cores in between. This apparently reduces hotspots on the processor, but the slide does also tell us about the cache arrangement. And we see the Arrow Lake program goals, performance per watt, reduce package power enormously, deliver a reasonable generational increase in multi-threaded performance, while maintaining gaming performance. Gamers should not expect these new processors will beat Raptor Lake. User experience, expand AI acceleration to enthusiast. Oh yes, AI is coming. Intel is putting an emphasis on coolness and efficiency, just as they did with the Lunar Lake laptop chips. And here we see how the new processor breaks down. The P cores use Lion Cove technology, just as in Lunar Lake, and have a 9% IPC uplift over the previous generation, compared to Raptor Cove. It's the SkyMont E cores that offer a huge 32% uplift over the existing GraceMont E cores that we have in Raptor Lake. And this diagram shows us how Intel has taken the SkyMont and Lion Cove cores and expanded those tiles to fit in a gaming laptop chip. We can see the same components as in Lunar Lake, a GPU tile, an SOC tile, the IO tile, and a compute tile, but the ratios are quite different to Lunar Lake. There's much more emphasis on the compute tile. When we hark back to Lunar Lake and those performance cores, we see just how small they are in the chip, and the efficient cores in Lunar Lake are absolutely tiny. And you can see just how little space was taken up by the P-Core and E-Core clusters in Lunar Lake. By contrast, when we compare to Arrow Lake, we can see the compute tile is much larger. It's also worth noting that Intel doesn't talk about who makes these tiles. 
And the answer is TSMC. The compute tile is fabricated on TSMC N3B, the graphics tile on TSMC N5P, the SOC and IO tiles on TSMC N6. The base tile is made by Intel. And of course, Intel is telling us that it's all about their Foveros packaging that makes the difference. Intel tells us they've taken these new tiles which ditch SMT or hyperthreading to increase efficiency. They've changed the cache architecture for the E cores and also moved the configuration of the P cores and the E cores around to help thermals. And the upshot is that compared to the Core i9-14900K, the new Core Ultra 9285K saves a huge amount of power. However, Intel also says that gaming performance has dipped by a fraction of a percent. They claim it's par but 261 is less than 264. They also talk about different power profiles for the new processor. The default PL1 is 250 watts, but they're confident that 175 watts and 125 watts will also work fairly well. Intel's also putting an emphasis on the integrated XE graphics, not of course for gaming performance, but for additional duties such as AI. Arrow Lake includes an NPU on the desktop, so they have three compute engines that can provide a certain amount of AI power the GPU, the NPU and the CPU. But of course if you have an add-in graphics card, and let's face it you will, that can provide an enormous amount of AI power. The takeaway is that Intel claims a landmark reduction in power. We should probably add the words for Intel because AMD has been on this course for quite some while and the result is that Arrow Lake halves productivity power consumption. You'll note once again they're comparing here to Raptor Lake. But we also have a chart comparing Core Ultra 9 285K to AMD Ryzen 9 90 950X and they're claiming a very small win. And when it comes to straightforward compute power, and this is surprising to me, Intel claims their 24 thread processor can outstrip AMD's 32 thread processor. Intel also claims the win in terms of efficiency. Core i9 14900K does worst. Then we have the Ryzen 9 9950X, and then we have the brand new Core Ultra 9 285K. This is going to make for some interesting benchmarking sessions for Wii reviewers. And then we move on to Intel's Elite Gaming Experience. Intel's explanatory notes make it clear they're using high-end PC hardware. And when we look at the comparison of Raptor Lake to Core Ultra 9 285K, we can see a colossal decrease in power for the new PC. It's however very strange to see a new generation of processors that does not claim an uplift in performance. This is all about power savings and efficiency. The amount of power saved in each game varies quite significantly. About 60 watts is the lowest and then we jump up 80 watts 136 watts and 165 watts in Warhammer Space Marines 2 which is simply enormous you won't be surprised to learn that decreasing the power draw also helps temperatures it has to be said recent generations of Intel processors have been notorious for running very hot so Arrow Lake is returning to a more sensible place in the Battle of the Titans chart, Intel is claiming the gaming win against Ryzen 9 9950X. I find this peculiar as I don't consider this Ryzen 9 processor to be a gaming processor, but in fairness to Intel, AMD has made claims about the gaming performance of this very processor. And we can see that Intel claims the Core Ultra 9 285K can go head to head with the Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. How it competes against Zen 5 3D processors is of course a question for the future. Having made the case that Core Ultra 200S elevates your gaming experience, Intel goes on to talk about content creation and AI. And in the next chart we see them claiming some new wins over Ryzen 9 9950X. Intel is also confident that over the next few years, pretty much every piece of software including games will include an element of AI. So it will become essential to have an AI accelerator or two or three in your PC, as well as in your laptop and your phone. And they show here how the different pieces of hardware work in Geekbench AI, where the Core Ultra 9 285K comprehensively beats the i9-14900K, which of course does not have an NPU. However, each aspect of the new CPU beats the old CPU. And the same is true in UL Procyon AI Computer Vision. They're showing a variety of benchmarks using Integer 8, Floating Point 16 and Floating Point 32. 
And their takeaway, you won't be surprised to hear, is the new processor is better all round. Core Ultra 200S uses a new socket, although it's very similar to LGA 1700, it's a different platform and you need a new motherboard with an 800 series chipset, most likely Z890. Intel's keen to talk about overclocking and also support for very fast DDR5 memory, but those of course are going to be a function as much as anything of the motherboard and the BIOS. And Intel wraps up their presentation talking about the advantages of the new series of processors and telling us that we're going to see versions of these processors called H and HX in high-end laptops, both for content creators and no doubt for gamers. Be sure to check back in a couple of weeks time for my review of the Core Ultra 9 285K and the Core Ultra 5 245K and no doubt in time we'll get a Core Ultra 7 265K. Also I already have a few motherboards here. I am particularly interested in this apparently not going to go on sale in the UK Unify X but I think we're all going to be interested in the Z890 Tomahawk.